Well, I think we can pretty much predict that there will be protests if Trump contests the election and loses. Is he trying out his secret police right now in preparation for November, December, and January? Check it out. Leave your comments. Ding the bell. Share it with your friends and subscribe to our channel. And uh, now the Portland Bureau of Transportation, they, they brought out the parking ticket police. By the way, it's anything goes Friday. Whatever you want to talk about, give us a call. 202-808-9925. Uh, but Portland is bringing out the parking ticket police. And this is this is kind of mind-boggling. Um, the... the the, the, the feds put up a chain link fence, a real, real high chain link fence around the federal building, like, you know, like a block out or thereabouts. And it's not on federal property. It's on city of Portland property. In fact, it crosses a couple of streets. And apparently there's a very specific law here in Portland that says that you may not erect a barrier that blocks a bike lane without a permit from the city. And, of course, the feds never got a permit. And so the city attorney set the federal government a cease and desist order a uh, day before yesterday saying you've got to take down the damn fence. Uh, Public uh, City Commissioner uh, Chloe Udaly said in a statement, uh, and my apologies, Chloe, if I'm mispronouncing any of that name, uh, this, fa- this fence was constructed without permission or permits on public property and is both an abuse of public space and a threat to the traveling public. So, uh, you know, you just, you just use everything you've got. The parking ticket police are coming after you, the traffic bureau. But on a, on a more serious note, uh, Donnie Deutsch was on TV this morning saying that, and I didn't see it, I read a story about it, um, but I think I'm, char- you know, based on what I read in the story, I think I'm characterizing, it was over at rawstory.com, I think I'm characterizing this accurately, which was basically, given the polling right now, I mean, you know, Donald Trump is down like 13 points in Florida. He's down 10, 15 points in, in swing state all over the country. And, you know, part of it is that the white people in the suburbs that Donald has been shouting out to, hoping that they still have, you know, a lot of good racist bones in their bodies. You know, I'm going to undo that 1960s fair housing law that sends people into the suburbs. Yeah, right. But apparently people in the suburbs don't like the idea of sending their children off to jail, or excuse me, off to, uh, it's happening in our jails, Michael Cohen, we'll get to that in a minute, but don't like the idea of sending their kids off to school where they may catch coronavirus, and even if they don't get sick, bring it home to mom and dad. And by extension, grandpa and grandma and, you know, Uncle Ralph and Aunt Jenny and, you know, whatever it may be, right? They don't want that happening. Meanwhile, the school that Donald Trump is sending his kid, his own child to, uh, you know, the, they've got one, one, the fifth of the Trump children is living in the White House. Um, he's a young teenager. And uh, his school looks like they're preparing for distance learning. But Trump yesterday, nonetheless, said, I, you know, I'm fine sending my kid back to school. But on, on a more serious note, or not on a more serious note, but on, a, on another note, as Trump is collapsing in the polls, as Donnie Deutsch pointed out, he said, I can't see how he can win. I just don't see how he can win, given this level of polling. There's no way. Which raises the question, how is he going to hold office? How is he going to continue to stay in power after January 20th if he doesn't win the election? And, you know, I toss this out as a question to you, too. What do you think is going to happen? I'm seeing, obviously, massive voter disenfranchisement. They're going to do everything they can to make it hard for people to vote, uh, possibly up to and including shutting down the post office. The one, the one thing that may put a kibosh on Trump's plans in this regard is that Republicans, particularly in the Senate, are peeling away from him really rapidly. I mean, it has started. You'll recall back in the early part of this year, I was saying, wait until all the Republican primaries are done. There's still one or two of them to go. But most all the Republican primaries are done. And so now these guys 
uh, these men and women, these Republicans in the Senate who have won their primaries are starting to worry about losing in the general election. And they're discovering that the closer they bind themselves to Donald Trump, the more likely they are to lose. So what's he going to do? The Secretary of State for the, for the state of New Mexico, Maggie Toulouse Oliver, has uh, essentially wondered this out loud. She, she says, um, quote, there is no time, she's talking about federal agents in, in cities that have large proportions of people of color. And, and, and she's, she says, there's no timetable, there's no communication, clear communication from the federal government about exactly what they're here to do, whether or not their mission could change, or whether or not they'll be here short term or long term. And she points out that all the cities Trump and Barr have chosen just happen to have high concentrations of voters of color. Chicago's 30% black and 30% Latinx. Kansas City, 30% black, 10% Latinx. Albuquerque, 3% black, but 50% Latinx. Kansas City Mayor Quentin Lucas told NPR yesterday that he found out about Trunks occupying ports coming to his city on Twitter. Zero coordination with local authorities. And now they're sending to Seattle. Is this practice, not to, not to mess with the election, but for after the election when Trump loses, to put down the protests? And, and to what extent is it going to be a repeat of what we saw here in Portland last year when the Proud Boys and the Three Percenters and these, you know, these right-wing paramilitary groups, the, the, the Boogaloo Boys and whatnot, are showing up in camo and guns and all this kind of stuff. And, the, you know, they're on one side of the street and the anti-fascist anti, anti protesters, the Antifa, the anti-fascist protesters are on the other side of the street. They're basically yelling at each other. And the Portland police were coordinating with the fascists. You know, is that, is that how it's going to play out? Is that how Donald Trump is going to stay in office? Is, is he going to use the force of what has become his private SS, his private Gestapo, his private Schutzstaffel, his private police force, which is Customs and Border Patrol and ICE? He has, he's been going down to, the, down to the border over and over and over again, hanging out with these people, getting to know these people. It's increasingly looking to me like he's developing his own private police force that he's going to deploy to cities with large populations of liberals and peoples of, people of color. Not to, not to steal the election, but after the election, after he loses, to say, I'm not, I'm not leaving office. What do you think?